How are we going, everybody? Got the beanie back on today because we've just plummeted down to 10 degrees here and it's blowy too. I don't know what's going on with this weather, but I don't like it, that's for sure, because I haven't been in the garden today. It rained this morning until about 9.30, and then the sun came out and just burnt everything. And now we've got the wind coming through. It's going to get down to about 6 degrees tonight. You don't know what to put on. You know, you start off with a t-shirt, then you put a coat on, you put your beanie on, then you take it all off again. I know I'm whinging, and for those who don't live in Victoria, that's what it's like. And for those who live in Victoria, well, <laughs> let's move. If you're going to move, give me a call. I want to come with you. But in the meantime, while I'm trying to grab your veggies, let's have a look and see what's going on and see how the weather's faring on these plants. Now, we planted our beans in the middle there. They've all sprouted up. I'm very late, folks, by comparison to uh, other years or previous years. And by comparison to this year with many other people, I'm very late in planting. You can see the big malak is just starting to kick on now. And it's just been, it's difficult. They grow, then they stop, and then they grow, and then they stop. And this is the uh, west side of the ve veggie garden, which gets morning sun, but not a lot of afternoon sun. So it's perfect for your, your leafy greens. You can see the lettuce are all loving it there. The leeks are sort of holding on very late again with those. But the rocket, it's gone to bolt. Because of the heat, the spike in temperature, it's already trying to bolt. So I've nipped off all the flower heads to see if I can encourage more growth underneath. This bed's another one that I planted. Again, a lot of leafy greens, celery, that's big malacca, just putting on its first flowers. It's gonna rub against that post, that might knock them off. Gonna have to do something about that. Can't do a hell of a lot, because the wind's just giving them a hiding. It's just blowing so hard all the time. And I did plant, what's this one again? Seven pod yellow. I don't see it, I don't think this is gonna do much. It's just starting to push off underneath there, so you get a spike in temperature, great. But then when the cold weather comes in, it'll knock all these off. They won't, they won't tolerate it. What we're looking at here, folks, are self-sown George's tomatoes. Now these had grown in a pot. I threw a tomato in there, I let it rot down and they sprouted up and I separated them. And I've only had them in the ground about four or five days. And I've just taken off some leaves off uh, the top there because they might still be here. They had septoria leaf spot on them. I should have saved it for the camera. Here we go. This is it here. Have a look at that. Do you see these spots on it? Now, once that starts on it, you've got to get rid of it. You can't here. There's still some there. If I take that leaf off, there'll be nothing left. I'm hoping the roots actually take off really well. So then it starts to push on your growth and will clean up all those damaged leaves. You can spray it with bluestone, you know, bluestone-based fungicide. Even wettable sulfur will be good for this. But you really do have to get rid of these. Now, I've, ha I've touched this plant. Just remind me not to touch another tomato plant as we go through. And here, right here, was a big malacca. Not me, another tomato that fell <laughs> down on the ground. And I remember it falling. I said, you know what, just in case I don't plant, which I haven't, uh, we're going to get some growing out of these ones here. And here they are. They've all germinated. There's a little forest of them. The discolouring, the bloody cold weather. Yeah, I'm going to put a cloche over the top of that to protect them, but I need to separate them first, and then hopefully I can bring them on, and hopefully the bloody weather behaves, because there's so many here. This will go into our hothouse once we finish building it. And we're looking at Andrea Samatos. These were leaf cuttings. You can do a leaf cutting quite easily, folks. You basically take the leaf off and stick it in the ground. We've done that demonstration. Oh yeah, we've got some over there growing. I'll show you those too. But look how good these are going. Now these need to be topped up to here. I've got to cut some of these uh, suckers out, you know, the extra shoots that are coming on. I don't want them all to grow through. And we are getting our memory plant growing back as well in the background. So what you see this ground cover appearing again is the memory plant, which is a good plant to have as a ground cover, but just got to control it because it can take over everything. And before I forget, I actually planted some burpless cucumbers in here. And the weather, look at this curling it over, the cold weather knocking it about. A couple of lettuce seedlings in there, but these are the cucumbers. Got an asturtium popping up there. One, two, three have germinated. Number four and number five over here have yet to kick on. So we're gonna try and grow them here. <laughs> I laugh, because I know what's gonna happen to them. They're just gonna curl over and die from the cold weather. Well, it's gonna get hot, then it's gonna get really cold. Gonna have to cover these ones. These are the ones here that I was telling you, leaf cuttings, these were taken off the plant just there, which is the big malacca, and I popped them in not even a week ago. There's two here. 
I'm not going to leave them in here. I'm going to actually transplant them later on. I'm just going to let them take off a little bit more, establish a better root system before I dig them up. It's a little bit early now to dig them up because uh, I'll disturb them and they'll probably go backwards a bit. They'll take again, but leave them, let them settle in is what they say. And once you see a good enough growth on top, dig them up and relocate them if you need to. Now these are the Adele tomatoes. I haven't labelled them, but I do remember them. Now I did plant these uh, almost two weeks ago, I think it is, and they were looking pretty ratty because they were in sandy loam soil in a pot. Uh, and I did sense give them a feed of EK Butch and Liquid Gold, and they're in our planting mix, and look at them, they've kicked on really well. They're holding on considering this is where they get a more afternoon sun too, so at the moment, because of the weather being so radically cold or up and down, they need more sunlight. They can tolerate the shade, but look, see how the wind's blowing them around? They need to keep, keep nice and warm. So these are now going to be trained on the string. As you can see, I've got that there. All you do is wind it around by comparison to these ones over here on a stake. You know, most of my growing years have been on string. You're licking my hand. Um, have been on string, folks and I've enjoyed it and I do love it and I'm trying the posts and I can do the posts but they annoy me, <laughs> they really do. You've got to spend a lot of time with them. I actually don't have a lot of time. So getting out of here and trying to manipulate the leaders growing up and tying them up together is really difficult uh, when you don't get out here every day. It's okay, what's wrong? Okay, relax, it's okay, your turn will come next. So getting out here every day is good if you're gonna be growing on posts because they do need a lot of attention or you can espalier them. Now, and a lot of string is going on there too, a lot of tying up. And it can cause a little bit of damage, especially with a post when it starts to rub against the flowers, the little tassels of flowers that you have on them. So my preference is a string, although with the high winds, they get knocked out a bit too. So they get wobbly, they start wobbling around. You can see the string, how loose it is. And at times you may need to get up there, as I need to do now, as I can see, and loosen it, or retie it that is. So just take off the knot and just pull it up a little bit more, if it allows me to. Which way is it? There we are. Just make sure I don't pull a tomato out of the ground, eh? There we are. So check your strings are not too loose because you don't want them sagging. And that way you can control the tomatoes and wrap them around. And if you need multiple strings, easily just add, add some more strings to it. I don't even know what's happening. One minute it's springtime, then it's winter, then it's summer, now it's winter again, and I don't know. If you had a little courtyard garden, I do, but I don't want to play tomatoes in there, but if I had a little courtyard garden in the suburbs of Melbourne, things would be a lot happier. But I'm going to persist with uh, the Lethbridge weather that we have here. And like last year's, we end up getting some good results at the end, be it all later than ever. If your garden's struggling, do what you can to protect it. Tie them up, make sure they don't get beaten around by the wind. And if the weather's going to be really harsh, be ready to cover them over because you don't want to cop any frosty nights. And We've had snow in September a couple of times and October. Who's to say we're not going to get snow in January? It could be a white Christmas, folks. It's only a couple of days away. <laughs> Check out our website, vasiliesgarden.com. And if you're ordering to click and collect from Dandenong North, today is your last chance to put your orders in because Wednesday is a cut-off time and you'll be able to pick them up the, the weekend. So vasiliesgarden.com for everything you need every day. From me, Vasily, Maresi. Mm -hmm.